Hello friends, David J. Kuhn with Qigong and Qigong awareness. Awareness being a key part of the practice as you can see the Buddha here behind me practicing awareness. It's a beautiful painting my wife and daughter got for me for my office. So I've had a lot of people asking me I've been traveling and teaching over the last seven years in a somewhat concentrated fashion. And then uh, we've been teaching seminars uh, primarily to acupuncturists and massage therapists for CEUs, um, but we also get a fair number of lay people coming into the programs, especially if I have taught Qigong in a particular area of town and so on. And really in the practices of Qigong that I teach, I incorporate the various forms of meditation that I've learned um, the various forms of mindfulness practice and awareness practice. Um, I've studied a lot of different martial arts as well, um, at least seven. Um, have three different black belts and working on another one and so on and so forth. Um, but a lot of people have been asking me recently specifically to speak to this idea of awakening, awakening energy or awakening consciousness or the awakening that's happening on the planet, this kind of idea. And although that might sound kind of foo-foo in my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu class, there's probably not too many people uh, open to that kind of conversation. I actually have come from both sides of the fence, I'm trained very much like a uh, Buddhist monk or a Shaolin monk in many ways for many years of my life, um, almost 40. And even though I live in the world and I don't live in a temple, I've been in and out of many temples, in and out of many different um, disciplines, and uh, spending many years and many, many hours at a time uh, training these different kinds of things. So uh, yes, again, uh, briefly, uh, I was injured at 12 years old, run over by a trailer. Um, it totally wrecked my back in the next couple of years. It got worse and worse for the next uh, 10, 13 years. Um, but in getting involved in some of the disciplines and practices, including pranayama, you know, breath work, um, things like breath of fire, um, other types of breath work from India, Qigong practices, uh, etc., causing energy to rise and provoking energy to course through my body and course through my spine. Uh, I had a series of uh, experiences that one could call some degree of awakening. Uh, my perception absolutely changed. Um, had huge catharsis in my body. Uh, went from looking like I was 50 to, uh, you know, going back to looking like I was 25. Uh, actually, it's quite a shocking difference. Maybe one day I can dig up a picture and show you the difference of myself, you know, now at 50 plus years old versus 25 years old. Um, back then, I carried a lot more anger and a lot more um, sort of frustration and so on in my body. And uh, do I believe that's possible? Yeah, I believe it's possible for everyone. And the general philosophy for behind Oriental Medicine, as I often say when I teach my programs, both live and online, Qigong and medical Qigong programs for our certification program and for CEUs and so on, for acupuncturists, massage therapists, lay people, etc., Whenever I teach, I always say things. Uh, there's a few things that I like to repeat over and over again for, for me, for obvious reasons anyway. And one is, is that you're hardwired for greatness. Your whole body being is hardwired for greatness. There are so many energy pathways in your body. It's ridiculous. And some of my follow-up videos uh, in this little series that I'm doing, I will bring in some textbooks and I will bring in some charts and so on and so forth. And I will show you uh, some different things in terms of what I mean by that, in terms of being hardwired for greatness. But not only do you have chakras, you have 12 different meridians, you have eight extraordinary meridians. Uh, in the Indian system, there's the Nadi's channels. Um, you have what's called the Nadi's egg. You have Kundalini uh, sitting at the base of your spine to be activated. You have these different pathways like what is represented by the caduceus in Western medicine. They wear it on their symbol on their jackets even though the average doctor has no idea what that symbol really even means. Um, but those are energy pathways in your body that can be activated. And at that time in my life, those pathways were absolutely activated, many of them. And uh, it definitely led me into a rebirth of an experience. 
and uh, left me free of the spinal disease. Um, it didn't all happen in one day. I'm not even exactly sure where it happened, um, but I was so used to going and getting x-rays and having uh, these doomsday prophecies from my physicians about how bad my spine looked and how I was gonna be paralyzed and so on. And uh, my short version of the story is that it all just went away. And um, what also went away was my perception changed, the way in which I saw other people, the way in which I felt about other people. Oftentimes, spiritual teachers will say, don't seek to change the world, seek to change your perception about the world. And in my process, I absolutely changed my perception about the world. I have a very hard time seeing anyone as um, bad or evil or unreachable. Um, I've worked in psychiatric hospitals. Um, my dad used to work in prisons. Uh, I was around uh, prisons in that regard and some other regards. I never went to prison myself, but um, I've been around enough of that kind of energy. And for me, there is light inside everyone, but you, you do have to go looking for it uh, a little more deeply um, in some you know, rather than others. But primarily, I'm here to say to you that if you desire to heal, you can heal. I'm also here to teach you, and again, in this little series that I'm doing, I will begin to instruct you and teach you how it is that I teach my clients and my students and how I've done that over the last 30 years, because um, I've been in practice for quite, quite some number of years. I mean, it depends on which exact practice you're talking about, but we're talking 30 to almost 40 years of uh, helping other people in all of these, using different types of disciplines and uh, mindsets and attitudes and healing practices and so on to uh, change and to cathart and to heal and to leave behind their past and to uh, adventure into a new possible uh, uh, and probable now, uh, you know, and so, again, is it possible? Yes, we have many, many students uh, who've done it, um, many of which you can see the testimonials in my book, uh, Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. You can see the testimonials filling the front of the book um, from medical doctors, acupuncturists, um, physical therapists, etc., um, psychotherapists. A lot of professionals uh, are drawn to the work. Uh, entirely possible. Does it start with uh, simple practices like holding your lower dantian? You might need to know what that is in order to do it. Um, it's the same place in the body that is talked about in Japanese martial arts. They call it the hara. It is the same center that the uh, they call in the Indian system the nadi's egg. It is the same area in which they are starting to term in Western science as the second brain. Um, this is an area that if you know that it's there and you know what to do with it, you can make some changes and it is the epicenter in the body, uh, one of them anyway, um, that you can set on fire um, because that's part of the Kundalini process and uh, awaken the energy. You know, so many people talk about fatigue and they don't have enough energy and all these other kinds of things. Again, you're hardwired for greatness. There are reservoirs of energy that live inside your body, not just out there in the cosmos, and you're just gonna breathe it in, although we may do that too. Um, but it also lives right inside of you. So if you are looking to know more details about how it is that you are hardwired for greatness, First of all, maybe go to my website, which is qigongawareness.com, and maybe pick up the book, maybe watch a few videos on the YouTube channel, and uh, stay tuned because we're going to get into some exercises uh, that are going to cover multiple levels uh, of body, mind, spirit, because in my opinion and in my experience, you cannot just heal yourself via the psychology alone. You cannot just heal yourself through the biology alone. Typically, if somebody has a multitude of things going on, it's gonna take a multitude of approaches to really radically and profoundly change your life. But is it possible? Heck yeah, it's possible. And um, again, you're, you're hardwired for greatness. So let's move on to the next chapter, shall we? Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you soon.